Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the China EV Show. I'm Toby, your host, coming from cold Shanghai. And today I wanted to talk about uh, some news from Zika, which is the release of their golden battery, which interestingly enough, happened at a similar time to Neo trialing their 150 kilowatt hour battery. So it's obviously a case of Neo doing this. So let's make sure we kind of stay in the, in the, in the news, stay in the fight and uh, do put something out there for people to, uh, for people to be interested in. So uh, it's a golden battery. I think the golden part's a bit of a gimmick. Uh, but it's a good gimmick because um, it makes it more memorable than all, the, all these other countless batteries you hear about. But basically, um, they put the battery for a series of tests tests in the videos. It was all, all done um, in house. It wasn't a third party, and it was very cinematic. I know this has been done before. Putting the putting the battery in water, putting it in a big oven, putting it in ice, dragging it along through mud, which apparently is a very useful test. But it was shot very nicely by Zika, um, so I'll give them that. But uh, interestingly enough. There was no nail test um, and I know it's an LFP battery so it should react very stably but I think it's very interesting and I think the, the fact that BYD did the nail test when they did not because their batteries are weak because they, they went through all the other tests as well all right your car can can withstand these conditions but in the event that it does get compromised what is going to be the reaction from the battery that's very interesting to know okay your car can take on all these things but there may be a situation where something goes through it or you know the part of the outside the housing is compromised that's why byd did the nail test not because it breaks all the time because it never does it's very stable and very strong but because if it does happen what is the what what is the reaction from the battery it's all very well saying oh my car can withstand a thousand degrees and minus a thousand degrees and water which aren't really everyday conditions but there could be a situation in a crash where something goes through the battery and whatever the reaction of the battery is important, right? Because while, while the chances of it happening may be low, you know, it's still very important to know this. But anyway, I'm pretty sure, like I mentioned before, it's LFP battery, so nothing really would happen. But I thought it was a very showy kind of way to do tests and not a very testy way to do tests. So the alleged density of this battery is pretty high, but actually not as high as the 150 kilowatt hour battery, which Neo trialed recently. The place where this battery excels is the volume utilization, which is actually 30% higher currently than the industry average, which means that the Zika 007, which will have a 100 kilowatt hour battery, will have 870 kilometers of CLTC range, which is further than cars with the same, much further than cars with the same battery size. For comparison, I think a Neo with a 100 kilowatt hour battery would be something around the 500 kilometer mark or thereabouts. So this is actually much higher. Same battery capacity, but actually you can do much more with that with that space. It has very fast charging between 10 and 80%. In 15 minutes, it can charge 500 kilometers of range, which is huge, which is very, very fast charging. So Zika are kind of branching out a bit. They've always had their charging stations, but now they're trying to push this a bit more and offer consumers a kind of holistic vehicle ownership experience, not just give us the cars. In much the same way that Neo has their battery swapping stations as part of the services, as part of the lifestyle it offers for its consumers, for its drivers, Zika is doing the same thing. But whereas Neo does battery swapping, Zika is clearly going to be doing fast charging. So they also mentioned a 15-15 plan to make sure that all of their, or at least most of their, 90% of their owners are within 15 minutes of being able to use this 15 minute charging 500 kilometer service. What do you think of Neo's golden battery? Do you think it's a PR stunt or is it something important for the industry in terms of keeping fast charging in the race? And where does this road go? Do charging times just get lower and lower and distances get higher and higher? Or is 500 kilometers in 15 minutes really enough for most people's daily lives? And of course, the ultimate question, which is battery swapping or supercharging, which I always like to ask. Let us know in the comments below and I'll see you next time on the China EV show.